Hi all, I have another amazing positional game to show you of Lula. So Lula against the Marino 5.0. This is in the Chesscom Computer Championship. Rapid Rumble, Stage 1. D4 from Lila. We have Knight F6. C4, E6, Knight F3. D5, Knight C3, Bishop B4. So far so good. It's the Queen's Gambit declined. Rogozin variation, Bishop G5. Here is where the Marino seems to improvise in possibly a bad way. Usually here, h6 is a move seen at the highest levels, encouraging bishop takes, queen takes. This position has been seen a lot before, where black takes on c4 and plays c5, so trying to combine forces on c3 here. And uh, this, this is thought to be even. This is a, a way of safely playing the position. Another way is knight bd7. And this white has a small edge here. Now in this game we have c5. This has been seen but it's a bit rarer. We have c takes, e takes and now d takes c5 here. Isolating black's queen's pawn. Uh, if white is too forceful with bishop takes f6 here, this is just not leading anywhere. Black doesn't have to recollect the pawn, just plays knight c6 and gets a very very good active position. Uh, for example, this is just better for black. Uh, and if um, here, uh, instead of seven bishop takes f6, uh, there's also queen c2. This has been seen before with an even position. Okay, so in the game, d takes c5. Very interesting. Knight bd7. Rook c1. We have knight takes c5. E3 now. Now this transposes anyway into main uh, theory. White's idea is pretty nice actually. The bishop has been committed to B4 and is a tactical liability in its own right, causing dark square concession if it's exchanged off. And in fact, a lot of players have played uh, here, instead of E3, have played Queen D4, just hitting that bishop, forcing this kind of dark square concession where there's still a nice that queen spawn. For example, this position has been seen uh, in a high-level game. Uh, Zubov against Gasanov in 2009, ending in a draw, actually. Uh, there was a bit of simplification, but Black managed to hold there. But you can see that the dark squares are a bit unpleasant. Now, Lila transposes, basically, e3 first. Black castles are now queen d4, so forcing this bishop off. A slight downside of this particular variation within the Rogozin, it seems, that uh, this seems actually better. There's a few positional trump cards here to play with. Knight c e4 has a tactical uh, venomness to it. Uh, well, it's hitting the queen and the bishop. So bishop takes hits the queen, uh, which solves that problem. Uh, knight takes f6. Uh, here you can see if simplification this is just going to favour white. This kind of position is just torture for black. Basically, the isolated queen spawn, the c file. Uh, this is just better for for white. Uh, okay, so we have actually the knight retreating to recapture bishop e2, and now plunging back in with tempo, setting a little trap as well. Good for, good against humans, but it's not a human opponent. Um, here in this position, bishop g4 has been seen before in a high level game, ending in a draw. Uh, that was actually back row, Etim back row against Conroe in week, Weekend Z uh, 2008. There was a long, grueling draw there. But in this game, knight e4, maybe a little bit on the dodgy side. It leaves d5 behind. There's going to be frontal pressure on d5. Very accurate move from Leila now, which looks a little bit unusual. Queen b4. You might think, why queen b4? <laughs> it ticks two boxes actually. It, it, it reserves the possibility of queen d4 later, but it also, because the king's in the center, an immediate queen d4 is met by it runs into check here. Yeah. Really annoying actually with the knight on e4. Uh, so, yeah, against the human opponent, this is great. Yeah, it's a play. Uh, and then this is just better for black. White can't castle because of the knight hanging. 
Uh, so say F3. This is just actually losing the A pawn as well. Black has a small edge. So very accurate. Queen B4 stopping this nonsense. Uh, A5. And what I've gathered really from checking out this game, Nemorino doesn't really understand that pawns are committal moves, it seems, as a general thing about this. A lot of committal pawn moves are made. This is one of them. It slightly makes this, this pawn island a little bit weaker. And um, already, you know, Black's pawn structure with the ice state queen's pawn wasn't fantastic. Uh, so that's a recurring theme of this game. Queen d6, white castles, bishop g4, h3. And we have bishop h5 here. On bishop takes f3, there's already uh, tactical pressure threatening bishop takes because of that pinned pawn. Let's say this to defend that. Again, renewing bishop takes e4 now. This line, again, it's a torture rack position on dark squares. It, white has a really pleasant advantage here. Yeah, all these lines with bishop takes f3 just seem to favor white, basically. Uh, as, as another sample, say this way, it's just favoring white. Black's really like even just losing a pawn here. So the bishop goes back. Uh, we have rook fd1. It is a little bit of a torture rack already, this position for black. Rook c2, and now another committal pawn move. And all of these require their own sort of investigation and report why this was needed. It does provide support for c5. Pawns don't go backwards though. Let's have a look at alternative. How does this work out? Well, it's a torture thing, uh, this position, because white can just take take on d5 here pretty safely because hitting h5 keeping on the back row here so this is totally pointless you know for example back row mate and if yeah it's just falling apart basically um and if we if we want to get a tactical here for the sake of being tactical with g5 to give the king a spot it, it just doesn't do anything this pressure on f2 is not doing anything knight takes g5 refutes the whole thing after the knight takes bishop takes white's got a massive advantage so yeah uh, black's got to keep calm here and it's difficult to even play rook c8 basically without losing d5 so we have actually um if we look at another alternative h6 though let's say g4 here this is an interesting uh thing where okay the rook gets out of the way of the bishop as a prelude uh this is an example where white can really use the e5 square as an example and you can see the dark square torture is just amplified and amplified in variations like this just bypassing that bishop on that diagonal to put the pressure down the c file and dark square domination could basically ensue as well as space gain on the king side it's, it could lead to really a horrendous position with great passivity black ending up losing material for example to tactics like rook takes f7 yeah it's just very very gloomy uh scenarios resulting from the isolated queen's pawn if black does nothing so that's my own explanation b6 it seems as though black is at a loss for any decent move the problem is this is yet another target now and another accurate weird queen move from lila kind of exploits this queen a4 it supports actually ideas potentially like rook c6 or queen b5 for queen uh, uh for rook c6 you know to first put pressure on the b6 pawn from here so basically yeah the difference between a queen here and a queen on b5 there's still pressure on d5 but it also supports for rook c6 also hitting b6 so they're both hitting b6 but queen b5 is potentially a nicer location uh, the blockade is fully kept here while doing this so this is really great positional chess really accurate uh, to new levels which you probably wouldn't see even in super gm games basically queen a4 it's mysterious uh, queen f6 black's trying to get some counterplay on knight c5 as an example um, instead uh, queen a, the queen can come over here as well hitting the bishop this possession back to torturing d5 uh, yeah um, is is just very very pleasant you know winning d5 the the two rooks can actually be given in, in, in this example scenario. Knight takes g6, threatens. Uh, yeah, white ends up with a massive possession there. It's just too dangerous for black. So anyway, uh, queen f6 
was played and now we have this queen b5 so yeah there's the big threat of rook c6 now black plays queen f5 here which is looking tactically at doing something with the c2 rook for example bishop takes and then knight g5 hitting f3 h3 in the rook uh, Leela bypasses this this is a very tactical move if bishop g6 then rook takes d5 is uh, running into knight d6 here hitting the rook as well though that would be an advantage for black but uh, actually white just bypasses this stuff with rook c6 not rook takes d5 rook c6 and then gets a nice advantage there so anyway uh, so queen f5 we have rook c6 yeah just every pawn move which black has made on the queen side has resulted in a shaky island there's already a shaky island of one here and there's a shaky island of two here this is positional play at its finest uh, just to show the tactical refutation here of an immediate queen takes bang bishop takes and then knight g5 hitting the rook hitting f3 this is just uh, not not that great it's it's even even Stevens here so yeah it's important for the rook uh, to get out of the way and also even worse in this line is an immediate knight takes f2 by the way uh, hitting the rook just to them so the rook gets out of the way but this is important for anyone wanting you know to play positionally always check out the tactics of the opponent uh, so while the opponent does seem to be able to create tactical threats they're, they're short-lived they're, they're extinguished and it just leaves black with these structural commitments here all the time another structural commitment okay it has a3 but this is actually now fixed a3 from white to stop a3 from black it is possible to take here and the worst that the best scenario is white playing b3 and that runs into knight c3 but again these tactics you know leaders not playing sorry Nimarino is not playing a human to run into these disasters um, and in fact even here even here even if a3 is allowed apparently this is okay for white anyway but this is much better just fix this pawn the pawns are being fixed restrain blockade destroy uh, but also at the same time managing all the counterplay and the tricks and traps uh, so g5 another structural commitment yeah this is just a huge massive example game of pawn moves which yeah they're never going to be retractable uh, if we look at this I mean b6 is is going you know say rook a, a, a5 this and then back to b4 it's just torture so g5 is, has a smack of desperation to it rook d4 which is really nifty not only blockading the pawn but tactically supporting bishop d3 takes e4 because there's a pin laterally on that d5 so for example g4 here uh, there's the nifty bishop d3 available g4 wasn't played but this is a total disaster position uh, for black yeah it's it's just uh, and if um, here uh, if also there's even hg though but um, this is also pretty good for white if it's ca played carefully it's a bigger match for white so this whole g5 g4 isn't entirely convincing here uh, so in fact f6 is played uh, you might wonder why we can the second rank what on earth is that about I do have one variation which demonstrates sorry why this would have been weakening because it's actually shielding the bishop on g6 I have one variation which shows that uh, which is say king h8 was played this and bishop g6 we can see a mechanism here where actually look at this queen takes so undermines the e4 knight and there's a big tactic of rook takes g6 here which is one explanation why sometimes it might be good to shield the bishop on g6 but other than that yes yet another structural commitment uh, from black rook c7 is played now also even here bishop c4 the tactical bishop c4 is plausible why it's got a, a nice advantage there but rook c7 bishop e8 uh, yeah it's starting to fall apart it's starting to get unhinged queen takes is a safe win of a pawn because of rook b7 there's no counterplay here winning b2 yeah 
and white is able to establish authority on the b file to safely win that pawn thanks very much so rook on the seventh still blockaded a nice blockade isolated pawn there weakened pawns here weakened yeah seventh it's just horrible this is pure torture this position uh rook c8 we have g4 which does a few things but most notably uh as well as giving the king a square any taking and a pawn on e4 there's no f5 later to support uh, that pawn on e4 uh, so that's one aspect of this that this knight is a tactical liability we have bishop c6 the check here is is most is pretty harmless actually for example here uh, this is just again torture look at d5 white can end up just taking on e4 anyway with a massive endgame advantage a knight coming to c3 would double attack both of these pawns uh, white has to avoid tricks on the diagonal but basically this could be consolidated with a big advantage so it's pretty miserable now this end game scenario rook b6 bishop d7 knight d4 uh, white basically would love to get rid of this knight and uh, get the knight round to c3 for example uh, so king f7 king g2 uh, rook c7 bishop d3 king e7 uh, here yeah the knight's pinned anyway to h7 so this bishop takes so king e7 knight e2 getting ready for that beautiful bishop takes and knight c3 to hit both pawns overload the bishop h6 bang bishop takes e4 beautiful hitting both pawns poor bishop is just overloaded um and there's also rook b4 there's no point even playing bishop c6 but at the moment the king's here so white can improve things first anyway with king g3 first so not going into bishop c6 uh, now yeah at least that stops or well, it seems to stop rook b4 but rook b4 anyway leader doesn't care about the double pawns so these pawns are, are double attacked black takes on b4 but even though uh, yeah the bishop is for a moment holding against the knight the final nudge yeah b5 wins the a4 pawn and basically this is entirely hopeless knight c5 uh, is played threatening an immediate b6 b7 so the king steps there but knight b3 now the knight the bishop is pretty dumb here because knight d4 to f5 wins h6 h6 is away from the scope of any bishop protection so it's entirely disastrous end game here it's just very very easy technique winning h6 now and all of black's pawns go sadistically i mean basically yeah four pawns up so this is a good lesson in committal pawn moves and playing these tarash defense lines you might think it's good fun to have peace activity and in fact there are certain youtube videos out there which emphasize peace activity as like the top priority with examples sometimes peace activity at the expense of structure structural commitments isn't worth it the, 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 the they can be the peace activity can be extinguished uh, quite often you just end up losing positionally like this game shows so yeah it's all the pawns are basically gone and it's just easy from here of course let's have a look this is just yeah any any normal human player would have resigned I think most of them at a high level anyway so yeah Lila could have just queened the pawn by the way she's just trolling a bit uh, and then going in for the checkmate so I thought there were some nice positional lessons here uh, this probably is quite off-putting for anyone who wants to play with the isolated Queen's pawn but Nimzovich said by the way if you want to learn about all the elements in chess you 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 take each element and you play for both sides and you try and get a detailed investigation so anyway this was i thought quite instructive i hope you found it instructive too comments questions like shares appreciate it thanks so much